This program airs statewide on California Public Television and is a California's Gold Classic. This series is endorsed by the California Teachers Association, the California School Boards Association, and the California Library Association. It's located 24 miles off the coast of Santa Barbara, 54,000 acres of open land, some of the most interesting and spectacular terrain you'd ever want to see. Santa Rosa Island is part of the Channel Islands National Park and would be our home for three days as we not only explored its natural wonders, but discovered its rich human history as well. No doubt about it, Santa Rosa Island is a fine example of California's gold. Now Santa Rosa Island is remote and undeveloped. Just how undeveloped is it? Well, you're looking at Santa Rosa Island International Airport, which consists of one dirt runway. Just landing on this island is an adventure. But we were soon to discover that this place is full of surprises. Good morning. I'm Huel Hauser. Good morning. I'm Bill Faulkner. Welcome to Santa Rosa Island. A windy Santa Rosa Island. It's often windy here. Although it's not always windy here, we have days and days when it's really calm, but it'd be hard for me to convince you of that right now because this is pretty typical out here. We had heard that it gets windy here in the afternoon, but it's just 1030 and it's already windy. It's been windy all week and usually it'll be windy for several days like it is right right now and we're due for some calm weather. So I hope that we'll have some calm weather here soon. As our plane took off in a cloud of dust, heading back to the mainland, we were off in our own cloud of dust, off on a bumpy, bouncy trip that would take us all over this big old island. Huel, one of the things I'd like to point out is that Santa Rosa is the second largest island off the California coast, second to only Santa Cruz. And look at this this is what you call the wide open spaces here. This is Water Canyon. This is one of the largest watersheds on Santa Rosa. And the campground is just down Canyon and people camping here can explore this entire area now on, on their own. There's a lot of green down there in the bottom. Is there a lot of fresh water on this island? Well, this, this is one of the largest watersheds and there's running water year round, year round. Even during the drought years, we had water running through Water Canyon, so it's well suited for its name. Here we are at the Torrey Pines. These are the rarest pine trees in North America and they only occur here on Santa Rosa and in one other location. Where, what's the other location? Down near San Diego at the Torrey Pine State Park down near La Jolla. Now, what are they doing out here on Santa Rosa Island? That's an excellent question. We don't really know. We're trying to figure it out. It's a mystery because there's no fossil record of these trees being in any other location than where they are right now. And scientists can't really explain it. There are some theories uh, but nothing absolute. We can make some guesses. Do you think maybe the wind blew seeds over or something from the mainland? Well, they're, they're closely related to the digger and culture pines. And it's possible that a pine cone could have been blown out here eons ago and then evolved into a different kind of pine tree, what we call our Torrey pines. And but why we have two groves that are 200 miles apart, it's, it's unusual and we can't really explain it. All and, only, and only two groves anywhere in the state of California. These trees don't occur on any other island or any place else in California. They only occur on this hill on Santa Rosa wow. and 200 miles away. 
these pine cones can hold over 100 seeds. Oh, look at the size. These are, can I pick one up? These cones mature in, in, in three years. They contain over 100 seeds, and the seeds are among the biggest pine seeds that you can find. They're the Chumash Indians that lived here a, a few hundred years ago used, used to use these pine cones or these pine nuts for food. And it's just one of the unusual features of this tree. Another unusual feature is the really long needles. Um, not only are the needles long, but there are uh, five needles to a bundle. And let, let me show you what that looks like. You know, I'm trying to concentrate on what you're telling me about the Torrey Pines. <laughs> really, what I'm trying to worry about is whether we're going to get blown off this island or not. But you can see the way these Torrey pines are growing over here, that, that they're used to this wind. Yeah. Look at this sand dune. We this have, is a beauty. We, we have two or three large sand dunes on this beach. And although we don't like the wind, this is what they produce. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> this is beautiful. And there's there no human footprints anywhere around here. The, so we got the beach to ourselves. The beach to ourselves, exactly. This this is one this is this represents some of the solitude that you can have out here. This beach is probably four miles long. And if you can, even if you're camping out here with a small group, you'll be able to walk this beach on your own, sometimes by yourself. This is and just beautiful. If you like to walk beaches like I do, this is a great place to come and, and spend a weekend. Wow. Oh, look, that sand is coming right at us off that dune. It'll, 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 it'll get, get it in your teeth. It's, 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 it's good roughage. My contact lenses don't like that <laughs> sand dune blowing on me. <laughs> no, no, not, not at all. So it's hard look, to look up Look, there's another one down there. Yes. There's, two, there's another one behind that one, so there's actually three. And there's some other little ones little beginning ones. to build up down here. That's right. So this wind is just piling the sand up. Huel, you see all this driftwood? Yeah. Well, the, the Chumash name for this island was driftwood. Wima. Really? Wima. Wima. Wima is what they call this island. It means driftwood. And because of the currents, in the Santa Barbara Channel, we receive a lot of the driftwood and other things that are floating out there in the ocean. So there's always been a lot of driftwood on Santa Rosa Island, or as it was called by the Chumash, Wima. Wima. And driftwood was very important well, in, sure. on an island when you don't have a lot of resources for building and even making their boats. Yeah. Because you get some big pieces. In fact, not only would you get this kind of drift driftwood, but redwood logs from Northern California would float down and wash up. And when they found those, that was really something special. Yeah. And they would, uh, they would rip those into planks and make their canoes. I keep seeing things along the side of the road and making you stop. But this is, this is just beautiful. It's a flowering cactus of some sort. Well, I'm, I'm glad to stop. This is, this is really pretty. This is a, a prickly pear cactus. It's one of two kinds of cactus that we have here on the island. The other is choya. So we have choya and prickly pear cactus. This, this cactus here was actually used quite a bit by the Chumash Indians as well as people today. This is just beautiful seeing this in relationship to all of this, all of this wide open space. Okay, and, and this plant right next to it is called the lemonade berry. The lemonade berry? We call it the lemonade berry because... What, what do you mean, this? This, this thing right... This, this thing? It's called the lemonade berry. Yes. 
right here. This is called the lemonade berry, and you probably want to know why we call it that. The, the berries, which will come out later on, have a, a bitter sap that coats them. The Chumash Indians would actually soak, this, soak, soak them in a bucket of water, and they'd get a flavored drink. Maybe the first lemonade stand. <laughs> right really? here on Santa Rosa Island. Really? The lemonade berry. Now this is precarious. Yes, Yule, it is. We're over on the north side of the island, and we've seen a lot of unique things here today. But in 1995, we found something really unique right down at the end of this wash, a complete skeleton of a pygmy mammoth. A pygmy mammoth. This, now, we've had, we had Colombian mammoths on the mainland. And if you go down to the La Brea tar pits, you'll see examples of them. But one of those mammoths, or many of them, swam out to this island, and when they did, they reduced in size to about half, half of their size. Over how long a period of time? Six, seven, eight thousand years. Not really very long for them to go through this kind of reduction. So we had a unique mammoth, an, an island mammoth, here on Santa Rosa that walked around this island maybe 12, 13,000 years ago up till about maybe 100,000 years ago they lived here. And we've found bits and pieces of these mammoths for, for years, but we never found a complete skeleton until just a few years ago. And it's been pretty exciting. Boy, this point right here, of course we haven't seen the whole island yet, but this is just a wonderful view standing right here. Oh boy, look at this. I think this, this represents what California looked like a couple hundred years ago. These undeveloped coastlines with uh, dramatic beaches and, and beautiful scenery, it really represents something that was very common on the mainland, but now is really preserved out here on the islands. No doubt about it, Santa Rosa Island is filled with natural beauty. It's also the home to wildlife. Look at these little deer we saw heading up into the Torrey Pines. But the next part of our adventure dealt with the human history of the island. Of course, the Chumash Indians lived here first, and then in the 1840s, this was a Mexican land grant. And from those days since, the island has been used for cattle ranching. In 1902, the ranch was purchased by the Vale and the Vickers families, who formed a partnership, a partnership that continues today into its third generation. And the old ranch is still there, still operating, even though the U.S. government acquired the entire island in 1986, the Vale and Vickers family still run the ranch on a lease. And as we were about to discover, this cattle ranch and the way it's operated is as old west as you can get. Can we stand around here so we can get a good look at this house? Well, we sure can. Because this house looks like it may have been here for a while. Been here for a long time. She was built uh, uh, sometime in the uh, late 60s, early 70s. You're talking about 1860s? 18, right. So it's uh, well over 100 years old. Yeah. What was it like coming out here as a young girl and visiting this ranch? It was great. We had a lot of fun. We had great time with our families, with our all my cousins. That's how we got to get to know each other. Um, and we were really resourceful because we didn't have TVs. We read books and we played outside all the time. How would you entertain yourself out here when you were out here visiting the ranch? Well, it's a kid's paradise. We, we made forts in the hay barn and we did things. We rode horses a lot, um, played at the beach and went fishing. There's their old baseball diamond too that they <laughs> played baseball at sometimes. Their baseball diamond? Right. Right. Yeah, ask my sister let's, about it. Let's take a look at this. What do you mean your baseball diamond? Well, there's the pitcher's mound right here. And if you hit the water trough, you got a home run. 
so it was perfect and a lot of the cowboys families came in the summer and at different times we had different crews and scientists and all kinds of people here who would join in really so this was the baseball field this is it <laughs> <laughs> without cattle in it of course right <laughs> you know i never had thought about the fact that there were so many horses out here too, but in order to have a cattle ranch, you gotta have horses. Mm -hmm. And every cowboy needs at least three or four in his string during the work season, so you can let your horse rest for a couple days in between. And certain horses are better at cutting in a corral, um, which you'll see my dad do a little bit this afternoon, how important it is to have that kind of horse. So were these all cattle horses? Yeah, we try and breed our horses. Um, Mary knows a lot about this because she does cutting, but we breed them so that they have cow sense, is what we call it. And that means that they'll watch a cow and use their body. Boy, they are beautiful horses. But we got, uh, as you can see, we got some rough country, and uh, it takes some good horses to gather this whole island. Yeah. So these horses can go for a full day out there. If necessary, sure. Yeah. These are two of our cowboys. Uh -huh. This is Beto. Hi. Hi Joel Hauser. Nice to meet you. And this is Pancho. Hi. Hi, Pancho. Is Pancho the guy who's the who does all the work? He makes the reins and he just made me a beautiful set of reins. Can we take a look at that? Because yeah. I've heard about your work. Let's take a look at that. They are beautiful. This is an interesting place here. These reins he made, and he starts with a hide. This is the, a beautiful old art of braiding these with rawhide. And he, he cuts it out of the hide, and then he treats the small strips, and he spends hours after he's done cowboying just braiding these. And see the different work on the buttons? Wow. And this is just incredible work. So this is the way well, just looking around here, this is the way this place probably looked a hundred years ago. Yeah, this is a treasure. I mean, this is California history. Yeah. It really is. It's, it's early California. Now, where did he learn this art, this craft? Where did he learn this craft? Here, in the part of the Jesus. His uncle, Jesus, who worked here for 30 years, all of my life, taught him how to do this. Really? Yeah. So he is a second generation cowboy out here on this ranch. That's right. This is beautiful work. And this is done uh, exactly the way it used to be done? Oh yeah, mm -hmm. this is an old art. It's kind of getting lost, but uh... That's the way it's all been done for years. Yeah. Nice work. Okay, thank you. Very nice work. Doing it the old-fashioned way. Now, I'm standing here with Laura and Meredith Wallace and Sissy Wallace. Right. Your husband is the ranch foreman. Yes. You all have lived out here how many years? We've lived out here for 12 years. So what did you think that first day when you came out here? It was nothing like what I expected. <laughs> I expected restaurants and stores, and I, I, I was told it was a remote island, but until you come out here and get off the plane, you just don't know. Yeah, and so what's it been like for you out here? You've got this beautiful house with a front yard. Look at this view. I know. You've got a million dollar view here. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. The happiest times of my life have been on this island. Really? Yes. Now, what do you mean by that? Well, it's just, it's real peaceful, and although we do get people visiting and stuff, it's just, um, it's just really a peaceful, it's really a nice place to live. Yeah. It, it's kind of a dream. It's kind of a paradise. Yeah. Now, what's it like living and working out on this ranch out here on this island well it's kind of a life to itself it's more or less your own world you know you're not putting up with a lot of people and traffic and whatnot you just do your work and that's it is it hard work oh yeah we put in long hours but then we have some easy days too mm -hmm. people tend to stay out here once they get out here don't they well yeah most of them do they like it and uh 
there's some that can't stand it. <laughs> How long do people tend to stay out here? Oh, uh, we go to town about twice a year. My twice wife and a I year? Mm-hmm. And uh, the boys, hit, uh, as soon as we get through with spring work, well, they'll go in for 30 days, and then they'll come back out, and uh, then on Christmas they have another 30 days, roughly. So you only go into town twice a about, year? About twice a year for a week at a time. That's enough. <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you, sir. Jose. Jose. During our stay on the ranch, we had a great time. Got to meet all the cowboys and had an unbelievable beef barbecue dinner. Mm-mm. But the highlight of our stay was getting to see for ourselves an honest-to-goodness cattle drive. Lástima me das, a que lástima me das, pobrecita guacamaya. Se acabaron las petallas, ahora sí que comerá, pobrecita guacamaya, ay que lástima me da. Huela, 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 como yo volé, cuando me llevaron presa, señorita, por usted. Huela, 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 como yo volé, cuando me llevaron presa, señorita, por usted. About the cowboy in itself, the work itself, how hard is the work itself to get young people interested in doing when they first come out? Well, that, that's what they're hired for, to be a cowboy. And I think they all enjoy it. They enjoy the cowboy a lot more than the groundwork, like building fence and whatnot. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a pleasure to get on a horse after you build fence a little while. Mm -hmm. But we have a lot of uh, groundwork, we have a lot of cowboy work and it, it just all mixes in together. There's always something to do out here. Always, never get it all done. Do you feel like that you're literally carrying on a tradition out here? Well, I hope so. You know, I, you know, if, if I'm not I'm in the wrong place, you yeah. know, because it's the place to do it. Yeah, it's got all the ingredients out here, you doesn't it? It does, it's got horses, livestock, and scenery. You know, that's the three combination. And plenty of room. A lot of room. A lot of room. So for a cowboy, this is a choice place to be in a way, isn't it? You bet it is. You bet it is. I, th I think it's it's a great place, and it's uh, it's done the way that that they did it years ago. And uh, it's not mechanized, and uh, that's fine with me. You know, it's it's a horseback outfit, uh, horseback and grass. You know, that's what. What's good about it? Yeah, that's the way it used to be. You bet, you bet. That's the way it should be, you know. And there's, we're running out of places like these, you know, to to uh, to experience this way of life. It was early in the morning, right at daybreak, as we witnessed what I guess is the most unique thing about this old cattle ranch because just like they've been doing it for over a hundred years, the cattle were actually driven down a wooden pier and loaded aboard a cattle boat to be shipped over to Point Wanimi on the mainland. A remarkable sight. <laughs> Now this is something to see. Well, yeah, it is to you. <laughs> but I mean, you don't, this is, this isn't happening anywhere else, is no it? No place else in the world that I know of. Really? This is the only, only uh, offshore cattle operation that I know of that's hauled by barge 
and load it off a dock. And where the cowboys actually drive the cattle out to the end of a pier. Oh, to the end of the pier where we load it. Wow. Now, has this been done the same way all these years? For me, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Hadn't changed a Hasn't bit. Hasn't changed. And there they go, they're going into the chute, and they come around here. To me, just looking around right here, this is the Old West. This is the Old West. It's about the only place left that is the Old West. Why do you think that is? Well, because it has, it's not overrun with people. There's not motorcycles, automobiles, and whatnot running all over, and we do everything on horseback, just like we did years ago. And, uh, be nice to uh, continue this, but as uh, modern times come, it's it's on its way out. With my rope and my saddle and my horse and my gun. I'm a happy cowboy When I'm riding with the sun And I'm always on the run I'm a happy cowboy If I'm sitting in my saddle And I'm rounding up the cattle I'm at home on the range And I love to hit the leather In any kind of weather And I know I'll never change With my rope and my saddle and my horse and my gun I'm a happy cowboy And when the day is ending I bless the setting sun For a happy cowboy's work is done Well, hello, everybody. I'm Huell Hauser, and I sure hope you enjoyed this adventure. If you'd like to see it again or share it with your family or friends, or perhaps donate a copy to your local school or library, it's available on video cassette and on DVD. All you have to do is call 1-800-266-5727, and we'll be glad to send it to you right away. <laughs>